Hello, my name is Sarah McClure, and today I'll be talking about our paper on efficient scheduling policies for microsecond scale tasks. This is joint work with my wonderful collaborators at Berkeley, Amy, Sylvia, and Scott. Today, data centers are tasked with two competing goals, achieving low latency, especially at the tail, while also achieving high CPU efficiency as we face the end of Moore's law. These goals are especially difficult in the face of modern latency-sensitive applications with bursty request patterns and tasks that can take as little as one microsecond. For a given application, one could easily ensure low latency by provisioning enough compute for peak load, but this would sacrifice efficiency. Similarly, one could achieve high efficiency by being conservative in provisioning resources, but this could easily cause queuing and de long delays during periods of high load. While these goals are competing with one another, they can be simultaneously achieved with fast multiplexing of resources, where the system may adjust the number of cores allocated to an application over time. Accordingly, a common data center approach is to run multiple applications on the same server, allocating some cores to each application as load varies. For example, this could be one latency-sensitive application in a batch processing application, or an application in some cores dedicated to a network stack or a file system. By reallocating cores quickly, the batch application can consume any spare cycles that the latency-sensitive one does not use. This approach avoids both potential pitfalls, over-provisioning and sacrificing latency, or under-provisioning and sacrificing, or sorry, over-provisioning and sacrificing efficiency, or under-provisioning and sacrificing latency. Several existing systems take this approach of multiplexing between applications, such as Shenango, Caledon, and Fred, to name a few. These systems reallocate cores to applications for efficiency while also achieving low tail latency. Let's see how current systems handle running a latency-sensitive application, here memcached, and a batch application on the same server. Existing systems are generally good at achieving the required low latencies, so we'll focus on efficiency. In the experiments, we'll increase the incoming rate of memcached requests and see the total throughput of both applications. As we increase the offered load to memcached on the x-axis, its, uh, its achieved throughput should increase linearly. Ideally, as the memcached load increases, the batch application should use any spare cycles, looking like this, with batch application throughput in green and memcached in purple. The throughputs are normalized to the highest achievable value. Therefore, ideally, we would see the sum of green and purple stable across one across all loads. This would mean that the background application is able to use every cycle that the latency-sensitive app doesn't use. Now let's see the results from existing systems. Here we have the throughput achieved from a, uh, by Arachne. We found that it maintains low tail latency in this setting, but it's far from the ideal throughput and wastes up to 64% of cycles. The situation is similar for Caledon with a smaller but still significant gap of 36%. In both cases, the batch application is unable to use all excess cycles, as shown by the gaps between the total normalized throughput and the ideal. And this led us to wonder, why do these systems fall short of perfect CPU efficiency? In trying to answer this question, we found that systems consist of policies and a system implementation. Each system has two main policies, load balancing and core allocation, and both can take many forms. Core allocation policies determine when an application should add or remove cores to ensure there are sufficient but not excessive resources. Load balancing policies determine where to place incoming tasks for a given application when it has more than one core allocated. These policies are coupled with a specific underlying system implementation. For example, a system may use kernel bypass or the Linux networking stack. An existing work has not explored multiple policies within the same system implementation, as the policy choice is embedded into the overall system design. No prior work systematically disentangles these two pieces. Accordingly, when evaluating the performance of these systems, it becomes unclear which component one is evaluating and which policies would perform best. Therefore, a challenge arises in trying to reason about the performance of these systems. Are there underlying mechanisms to blame, or are there policies making poor use of the available resources? System implementations have been heavily studied, and the performance benefits of approaches like kernel bypass are well known. Instead, we seek to decouple policies and implementation details to determine the performance implications of the policy choices. More formally, we ask, what load balancing and core allocation policies yield the best latency at both the median and the tail, and CPU efficiency for microsecond scale tasks. 
Given that both load balancing and core allocation incur overheads, this question essentially asks how we should spend those overheads most effectively. And with microsecond scale tasks, these overheads can have significant impact. Ideally, we would like policies which lie on the Pareto frontier of efficiency and latency. In this graph, with allocated cores on the x-axis and latency on the y, we can imagine what the frontier may look like for a server running a single latency-sensitive application with the request load constant. On the far left, with few cores, latency will suffer, while on the right, there are diminishing returns in latency as we increase the number of allocated cores past the amount actually needed to serve the request load. In order to be both efficient and low latency, we would like to find a policy which resides on the Pareto frontier. And to answer this, we turn to simulations. Our approach was to use simulations to determine the relative performance of these policies without having to compare system implementations. And to do this, we model realistic overheads to move tasks and reallocate cores. And we assume a simplified model, for example, with one queue per core rather than having separate packet and thread queues. But despite this simplified view of the system, we found that our results were informative of real world ones. And we were able to produce performance benefits in state of the art systems by applying our findings. In our paper, we present many findings about the performance of these policies. But in summary, we found that work stealing is the best load balancing policy across every system and workload parameter we could vary. Core allocation policies must revoke cores proactively and with short tasks, beating the performance of static core allocations with dynamic ones is hard. In this talk, we won't be able to cover all these points and we'll instead just discuss a few briefly, but check out our paper for all the findings. In our simulations, we assume each server runs one or more applications where some have strict latency requirements. Each application is allocated a specific number of cores which may vary over time. Tasks can arrive from external sources as packets or be created by the local CPU as a thread, and incoming tasks will be spread randomly across cores. Each core maintains its own queue of tasks, and these tasks are served in FIFO order. There's no preemption of running tasks and no a priori knowledge of how long each task will take to run. We performed benchmarks to ensure realistic overhead modeling. By default, we modeled the overhead to move tasks between cores, which is required by load balancing as 100 nanoseconds, and the overhead to add a core to an application as five microseconds. We also performed sensitivity analysis, sweeping the load balancing overhead from zero to four times its value to ensure robust results. Let's first look at load balancing policies. The theoretical optimum is a single queue shared between all cores in an application. However, this is rarely practical in real world systems with contention on the queue limiting the achievable throughput. The simplest practical policy would be to simply do no load balancing at all. Each core has a queue and then could only dequeue from its own. Alternatively, we can make more intelligent load balancing decisions by moving tasks at different points in the queuing process. First, in an approach we call NQ choice, when a task arrives, it's enqueued to the shortest among a set of sample queues. And if the number of queues sampled is two, this is the well-known power of two choices. Next, we have work stealing, where when a core runs out of local tasks to do, it begins iterating through the queues of other cores. Once it finds a non-empty queue, it steals half the work. Lastly, we have work shedding. Here, an overloaded core, which in our policies is defined by a queue length threshold, notifies another core that it needs help. When next available, the notified core will balance the length of the two queues by stealing tasks. In order to determine which load balancing policy is best, we must decouple their evaluation from any particular core reallocation policy. Accordingly, we give each load balancing policy the same number of cores, statically allocated, for a given load and determine which achieves the best latency for that CPU utilization. This gives us the graph here, where we see each load balancing's tail latency for a given utilization at 50% offered load. This is similar to the Pareto frontier curve we saw earlier, as policies on the lower left are better. As shown by the single queue ideal line, the best policy is the one most to the bottom left of this graph, and here the best practical policy is clearly work stealing as shown in red. The results, these results are robust to ranging the load balancing overhead from zero to four times its benchmarked value and many other system and workload parameters. On the core reallocation side, the, poli uh, the optimal policy is less clear. By a reduction of the multiprocessor scheduling problem, we showed that computing the optimal schedule is NP-hard. 
The do nothing option here is static allocation, where the number of cores allocated to an application is configured at startup and never changed. Dynamic reallocation, though, can, de can depend on many signals. To name a few common ones from existing systems, core allocation decisions may be made in response to task arrivals, queuing delay, CPU utilization, or the failure to find work when work stealing. Specifically, we'll focus on four core allocation policies. First, we have a policy based on Caledon and Shenango, where cores are added when the max queuing delay passes some threshold, and cores yield when they fail to find work when work stealing. Then we'll consider a per task policy based on the prior system FRED, where cores are added when new tasks arrive and cores are revoked when there's no queued work in the system to steal. Then we have two policies that we propose, delay range and utilization range. These, as, there's, as their names imply, add and revoke cores in order to maintain a desired range of average queuing delay across all queues or average utilization over some recent period of time across all cores. For example, in delay range, if the average queuing delay uh, for an application is below the specified range, a core is revoked, while a core is added when the delay passes the upper bound of the range. These two new policies address shortcomings in existing ones, which are not configurable and keep cores around until they're unable to find work. Now let's see if work stealing continues to dominate with non-static allocations as well. Here we have the same static lines for each load balancing policy that we saw in the last graph in the background for context. Each point represents a different load balancing core allocation policy pair. All pairs with the same load balancing policy have the same color. Ignoring the specifics of the pairs, we can see that the red work stealing points are consistently closer to the Pareto frontier than the other approaches. We don't have enough time to get into the full complexity of comparing different core allocation policies in this talk, so we'll just jump right to the catch. Overall, we found that the core allocation policy space is less clear and cannot be easily decoupled from the accompanying load balancing policies. And we found there's no single best policy. So for simplicity, we'll focus on core allocation policies paired with work stealing. Broadly, we found that policies which revoke cores proactively, such as delay range and utilization range, can achieve consistently better efficiency, more to the left, than other policies. This is because these policies revoke cores proactively when their signals are good enough, rather than waiting until there's no outstanding work in the system, as other policies do. These policies also allow the operator to explicitly specify a range of acceptable delay or utilization, which can allow these points to move along the static curve to a different specified operating point of efficiency or latency. Finally, we applied these findings by modifying an existing work stealing system, Caledon, uh, to use delay range and utilization range. The throughput from real world evaluations is shown in these graphs. On the left, we have the Caledon graph from earlier in this talk, and on the right, we have the same experiment run on Caledon with delay range. These two policies and configurations produce similarly good tail latencies, so again, we'll just focus on efficiency. We can see the gains in efficiency clearly across the two graphs. We only show delay range in this comparison, but this is where our policies utilization range and delay range really shine, as they significantly reduce the number of cycles spent on unnecessary overheads. Between these uh, two experiments, we can see that delay range's worst case efficiency achieves 18% more of the total achievable throughput over Caledon. Overall, the takeaways for navigating this policy space in the future are clear for load balancing. Work stealing is the best. This is true across all parameters we could vary, including the overheads associated with moving tasks between cores. In core allocation policies, the story is less clear, so revoking cores proactively is important to achieving high efficiency, and delay range and utilization range are good options for both configurability and consistent performance at higher efficiency than existing systems. In summary, today we discussed how we, we use simulations to study per, the performance implications of core allocation and load out balancing policies for microsecond scale tasks. We found that work stealing is the best load balancing policy and proposed two policies for efficient core allocation. Applying these findings allowed us to increase state-of-the-art efficiency for no significant change in tail latency. Our code is available on GitHub and is linked in the paper, and I'm happy to take any questions.